What it do, man? It's your big homie Boom Man checking in, aka Boom Man Booming. And you just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. Let's get it. Ain't got no job, but I'm working. In traffic, I'm swerving and serving. That Glock on me, perk got me nervous. I'm gonna catch him and shoot. All right. So we got Boom Man off the porch with us today, man. Come on, Booming, man. How you feeling today, bro? Man, I feel good, man. I just turned 40. Really? Yeah. Happy birthday, it man. It was epic. Yeah. What'd you do? Man, what did we do? We had a we had an Indy King showcase. I threw forty thousand at Miami <laughs> Lounge. <laughs> uh, we we crowned the Indy King winner, which was Doughboy D. Um, I got a Rolls Royce from my company. They gave me the black badge Rolls Royce twenty twenty one. There you go. My wife got me a private jet for my birthday. <laughs> I took the family down to Florida. All my kids. All they moms spent time with the kids. Then I took a guy's trip out to Vegas. Oh yeah. And then I topped it off. We went to Vegas, went crazy in Vegas, made a little money. Um, uh, you know what goes on in Vegas stays in Vegas. Yeah, you don't have to go in detail. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> and then uh, I went to Cali. You know what I'm saying for a couple of days, and now I'm back. Okay. You know what I'm saying. That's, Ready. It's a blessing right there. Man. For sure. For you know. sure. Man, could you say 20 years ago that you would imagine that's how you would spend your 40th birthday like that? Definitely. Yep. Definitely. I'm mad I ain't doing it bigger. Really? <laughs> <laughs> hey. I should be only one by now if you'd asked me 20 years ago. Yeah. But, you know, I, it's all a blessing. Absolutely. It's all man. a blessing. Yeah, man. For sure. All right. So, Atlanta native, right? Atlanta native, yep. Okay. Yep, for sure. What part Southwest, of the city are you from? Southwest Thera High Green, bro. But to be honest with you, I'm really from all over Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I've been here since I was three. I done stayed in every project down there, every hood. Uh, I done stayed everywhere from Allen Temple to Bluff, uh, Main Street, West Clay, North Clay, Middle. I, 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 done went, I done stayed everywhere. People know me from, I done stayed literally on every side and downtown. You know what I'm saying? I'd have slept on the floor. I'd have slept in, in cardboard buildings. I'd have slept in huts. Like, I'd have, been, I'd have been through some stuff and made it out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For sure. What's your thoughts on all the changes that's gone through the city of Atlanta since you were growing up until today? You know, change is a part of life. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, I don't want to sound like one of them. You know, I done turned 40, so I don't want to sound like <laughs> unk. <laughs> <laughs> you get where I'm coming from, but you know, things change, you know, I'm sure it changed from when my mom first seen it to when, you know what I'm saying, she was older, you know, rest in peace, um, and whoever, you know what I'm saying, change is a part of it, I ain't mad at it, we, we growing, it changes, it evolves, some for the better, some for the worse, Yeah. you know what I'm saying, I'm focusing on the positive. That's real right there, man. Yeah. So, what age would you say you jumped off the porch? Man, I jumped off the porch, man. East Atlanta, probably when I was six, <laughs> I jumped off the porch. You know what I'm saying? But uh, in the music, uh, definitely um, out of high school. You know what I'm saying? Okay. They were high school. Um, definitely. You know what I'm saying? With K-Rab. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they were high school, man. They were high, Kempton Road, Southwest, Greenbrier. Definitely. Yeah. People know me from that side, for okay. sure. Yeah. Um, where does this hustler ambition that you, you know, you possess, when did this start? When did you realize, like, I'm not like a regular person where I'm working nine to five, man. I was in the military, right? So, um, I was in the Iraq war. Uh, man, they had us working like six days on one day off. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, I'm carrying rucksacks, it's 140 degree heat. You know what I'm saying? I'm moving sandbags. Uh, like guns, pouring water on my head, it's evaporating. And um, I made it through that. You get where I'm coming from? Uh, once I realized I could do that, you know what I'm saying? The military just give you a different kind of mental. You know what I'm saying? Once you realize you can go through certain stuff, it's like, oh, when I came back, I'm like, oh, this nothing. They don't work for real. You feel where I'm coming from? I'm used to 140 degree heat, working six days on, one day off, 12, 12 14 hour days. Like, real, like, for real, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, that was just, and then I, you know, 
coming from Southwest Atlanta, when I was in high school, I worked at this uh, clothing store called Walters. I don't know if you're familiar oh, yeah. with Walters downtown. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Shout out to Jeff and all of them, Pat, you know what I'm saying? Akumate, all of them, whoever's still there. Uh, you know, working at Walters, uh, learning how to hustle, compete, you know what I'm saying? Different things of that nature. And it, that just bred it. That wit coming from Southwest Atlanta with that military stuff. So being structured, like a lot of people say, boom, you real structured. Like Future's like, well, you, you structured. You know what I'm saying? Woo, woo, woo. It's like, it's just, it's the militant. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know no other way to be. You feel me? But that's one thing that stuck with me. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That's where, it's, that's where it came from. How many years did you do in the military? Like three and a half years. I got out with a disability. You okay. know what I'm saying? So, you know. I feel that. Yeah. <laughs> so when you came back, what did you, how'd you get your start? Were you throwing shows? What were you doing? Uh, you know, my best friend out of, uh, one of my best friends out of high school was K-Rap. You know, uh, we bought his beat machine. Me and a partner of mine, my dude, Mike, uh, my boy Energy, uh, my boy Sid, we tried to create this, this label called a Circle Click. You know what I'm saying? And um, we bought the beat machine, the, the keyboards, the uh, computers and stuff like that. They really based it around K-Rap. We was rapping too, but it was really more so catered for him. And um, I was at Morris Brown at the time. They lost their accreditation. I went to the military. Uh, when I went to the military, I went to uh, uh, stack up the bread, you know what I'm saying, to start the label. But while I was over there, he had done broke a record on ringtones while I was overseas with Laffy Taffy. Okay, yeah. And so um, that was like the beginning of it, you know what I'm saying? So when I came back, he was already with this one click uh, called BHI and with KD and all them. And um, they really didn't want me to be involved, but I had told myself, I said, the next time I find me a producer, I'm going to sign him. And that's what happened to be K on the track. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So how did you find him? Um, I found KE, I was in, like I said, I was down in South Georgia in Valdosta, 229. Like 229 really made me, I ain't gonna even lie, because it, 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 it was my playground to come to Atlanta. And I felt like I said, if I could be a big fish in a small pond, I could compete, you know what I'm saying, in, in a major city. And so uh, KE uh, was making beats down there. It was, a, it was a dude of mine named Cali. He knew I was into the music. He knew I had relationships in Atlanta with K-Rap, because at that time he was considered the snack, Snap King. He was mm -hmm. making a lot of noise in Atlanta. Um, and uh, he was like, I got this other producer. He just gave me some beats if you want to get on the song with me. And I was just like, all right, he let me hear the beats. I was like, oh, these are crazy. I was like, who made these? He was like, it's this dude named Kevin Arondo who's standing in a little projects over here. He sell them for like $30. I said, $30? I said, let me go, let me go hear some more. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, he introduced me to him. He said, I said, you got anything different beside this? And he started playing me pop beats and all kind of rock beats. I was like, oh yeah, you harder than K-Rap. I said, I got to take you up to Atlanta. And it's so happy that it worked in my favor, how God worked. K-Rap was his favorite producer. <laughs> really? Yeah. So I was like, that's too easy. So I brought him up to Atlanta. He ain't had no car now. He was in by Austin. You know, they don't got no outlet. So I drove up to the city. Took him to K-Rap. K-Rap didn't, obviously didn't want to do with him because he felt like he was mimicking his sound. Hmm. And uh, I took him by D4L studio. Over there with Shotty Lowdown. We put CDs like all over the city. Jay Money so happened to pick up one. And he was doing this thing on the internet. And he sent some beats over to FLY. So they so happened to make the swag surfing. Oh, and then Jay Money made the first name, last name, Choppers of the Year, stuff like that. And then we were doing stuff with Young Ralph and doing that whole, whole wave. And... Um, before you know it, the futuristic sound would birth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we, we on. What would you say about the futuristic air, man? I feel like sometimes it kind of gets forgotten. Yeah, you know, it's Atlanta, man. So, you know, culturally, a lot of stuff, uh, you know how it is in the, in the hip hop community. If it ain't about killing or drugs or money or banging, you know, people don't, they overlook it. You know what I'm saying? It's like they don't respect it as much because you got so many people that come off the porch, you feel me? That that's in the projects that struggle, that go through stuff, and they're not happy. You feel where I'm coming from? They they go, they done lost their family members, they lost their moms, their daddy on drugs, their mom on drugs. So, you know, we dance and we have a good time in the city to take our minds away from it, but it's nothing that's like respected, like where it's like, oh yeah, I'm representing 
the futuristic era. You feel me? Boom, boom, clap. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it was a young folk thing. It's just like now with the TikTok wave. You know what I'm saying? It's like no street niggas stamping that. You get her coming from. It's like it's what your kids do, and you know, you know how it go. But it was a fun time, man. That's the time where people actually danced. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, you know, looking forward to today, a lot of those trends set back then is what's popular now, though. Exactly. So it's like that futuristic title really exactly. lived up to its name. Exactly. It was so exactly. before its time. But definitely before its time. Futuristic. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. How'd you discover Roscoe Dash? Uh, once again, man, um, I was throwing parties. So I started throwing parties in South Georgia. I, I was a big fish in a small pond through some of the biggest parties in the city of Vought Austin history ever. Like I, I rented out a whole hotel, three floors, 82, 83 rooms, and threw a party in it. Turned off all the lights, had DJs on each floor. You know, stuff like that. And so I came to Atlanta with the same mentality, you know what I'm saying, guerrilla, mo guerrilla promotion and marketing. And um, I threw, I threw, uh, I threw mixtape release parties for a lot of the artists that was coming out. And, um, CEO Charlie, who was Travis Porter manager, mm -hmm. happened to hit me up. He knew how he knew we threw the parties, and uh, he was like, "Boom! I want to I want you to throw uh, Travis Porter first mixtape release party." I said, "Cool." Uh, it was in it was in Marietta at uh, Club Cali, and uh, it was epic because that was the first time they ever performed all the way turned up. Oh, really? Yeah. So they performed all the way turned up, but it was a key element that was missing, which happened to be Roscoe Dash. <laughs> um, but I didn't know that. So all I knew was, I was like, oh, they got a hit with this one. Mm -hmm. And I so happened to say that next to my partner, TJ, which is TJ Making Moves, if you're familiar with okay, TJ yeah. Making Moves. Yeah, so t I was throwing parties with TJ, and TJ got the Making Moves name for my old company, which was MMI, which was mm -hmm. Making Moves Incorporated. So uh, TJ was like, I know who song that is. That's not even their record. Yeah. That's this dude <laughs> named ATL record. I was like, word? I was like, yeah. And you know, at that time, I was rapping too. So I was like, I want to do a song record. This is a hit. You feel me? And he was like, I'll link you. He linked me with Roscoe, uh, which was ATL at the time, and he started telling me about, um, yeah, man, I'm not really getting credit for my song. Woo, woo. And I was like, dang, that's messed up. But I was like, so when can we get in, though? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know. Uh, and he was just like, yeah, I'm on the road. I'm going to Albany with them and here with them, you know what I'm saying, Savannah. But when I get back, we can link up. And then... Uh, one day I just had a dream that I signed him. No cap. Just like that, I had a dream that I signed him. I woke up the next morning like, I'm finna sign Roscoe. I went through the house telling everybody, I, I used to stay with all of them. Like I had rented out this big house in Tucker and I had all my promoters and stuff staying with me. And um, I was like, man, I'm finna sign Roscoe. And they was like, word? I was like, yeah, watch. <laughs> and so I was on his line, I was like, bro, so what happened? He was like, yeah, man, I ain't really getting no credit. I said, I've been through that before, like, with my boy K-Rap. He didn't really get the credit that he deserved. Like, he started the whole snap wave. Mm -hmm. Lil' John and all the rest of these folks kind of, you know, took the, the luster from him and didn't give him his credit. So I was just like, I know how I, I can help you. I can help you get a situation because I was already moving around with KE in different buildings and different spots. And I was just like, you know, I think I can help you get, get recognized for your record. And, and he was like, for real? So... I had K we make the beat. I said we was already working with Soldier Boy. I said, send it to Soldier Boy. I know he gonna jump on it because it's a hit. <laughs> sure enough, so he sent it to Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy jumped on it right then and there. And then at that time, you remember uh Ustream was the thing. Oh yeah. You go he, live on Ustream. He went live on Ustream, it was over. It was over. You know what I'm saying? It was like that's Chase Porter record. Well, it's just to go to show you. You know what I'm saying? And it was a big frenzy right then and there. And so, you know, at that time it was like boom. You know, all the labels started calling. It was over. You know what I'm saying? And we did a lot of work after that, obviously, to get him known for the record. But that's how we ended up signing Roscoe. Okay. And who did he sign? Was it Universal or Interscope? No, he signed with, uh, first he signed with me. I did a deal with Music Line, who did a deal with Zone 4. Okay. And we all, all did a deal with Interscope. Okay, okay. I guess. Yeah. yeah so, so it was like a bunch of people involved. So yeah. it was MMI, Music Line, Zone 4. <laughs> Yeah, in the scope, yeah. Yeah, talk about the importance of learning the music business back then, man. Man, that was my testing ground. Like, uh, I wanted to learn so bad, and I had no mentors. You get where I'm coming from? Um, and people, you know, 
artists don't understand how big it is to have a mentor. You know, people just go through stuff and they, especially independent artists, they throw stuff at the wall and hope it stick. They don't know what they doing, how they getting into it, nothing about it. Then they go sign a deal and then get mad and say, man, I just, they, they signed me to a bad deal. I'm like, my nigga, how the fuck you get signed to a bad deal? You signed it. <laughs> Am I tripping? It's real. Yeah, so how you get signed to a bad deal? What it was is you was too impatient. You didn't want to invest in yourself. You didn't want to ask no questions. You made a thirst play. And so what happens when people make thirst plays is because they're chasing money. You get where I'm coming from? And I tell people all the time, I said, man, I don't work for money. I work for my purpose. I work for my goal. I work for a passion, for a reason, on purpose. You get where I'm coming from? Because when you work for money, you make thirst plays. And money is not meant to be hoarded anyway. It's not about chasing paper. Money is a tool. You know what I'm saying? I need y'all to understand. Money is a tool. You know what I'm saying? To do, to fulfill your purpose. Whatever you're trying to accomplish. You know what I'm saying? It's not the thing that you live and die for. That's why so many people are killing each other over, over money. You can't die with it. What are we doing with it? You feel where I'm coming from? So me, I, I work differently. You know what I'm saying? I work for a purpose and then say, okay, cool. I'm trying to get a Rolls Royce. What is it going to take? Okay, cool. You're going to need 30,000 down. You're going to need, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> okay, cool. Now I reverse engineer. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I'm trying to get this. I'm trying to buy this building. What is it going to take to buy the building? And I start working towards that. And then I say, okay, cool. Now, how can I get this to do that? I don't work for money. You know what I'm saying? Because people idolize and they become a slave to it. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Now they start doing all kind of crazy stuff out of character. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. That's but, real. Yeah. yeah. How much uh, did being an artist yourself, did you learn about the music business then too? Man, it, 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 being an artist is what drove me to doing what I'm doing right now with Authentic Empire and helping independent artists. Uh, the fact that I didn't get the opportunity to go to a major, the fact that I, I had to do it myself and I, I turned and, hey, I need to get a mix and you half-ass mix my record or I need to get a master, I couldn't really go to somebody and say hey can you do my mix can you do my master and they'd be like okay cool we got you you know what i'm saying now you got a little bit more open avenues to it like with different studios like a patchwork but even on a label side like the consulting side hey how do i get on what are the major labels looking for like i said people don't even know what to do you know what I'm saying they just signing deals and don't even know what they're signing you feel mm -hmm. me and then scream they ain't a bad deal so it's like now it's a place, me being, I had to pay a lawyer to, to figure it out, to understand. And so now I'm able to, being an independent artist, put me in a situation where I'm able to learn and provide those avenues and resources and things of that nature where people can say, I can hold him responsible. You feel me? Because it was no accountability. You feel me? It wasn't a real business. Being an independent artist, you couldn't go sign up somewhere and really learn. You feel me? So. Uh, me being an artist paved the way for me to really do what I'm doing now and made it a passion for me because now it's like where I want to help independent artists, where I want to help people like me. It's, when I look at an independent artist, I'm looking at myself. Like, dang, I, I've been there. You know what I'm saying? And I, I, I remember the frustrating times. I remember spending $250,000 and $40,000 on radio and this right here and that right there and marketing promotion and people still look the other way. You feel me? And I'm like, why? You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't, I ain't get it. But guess what? I'm still here. I'm still blessed. You feel me? And I'm making the rack aids and the band aids. <laughs> Real <laughs> shit. <laughs> no cap. <laughs> So what Boom, year man, did still booming for real? Yeah. So what year did you launch Authentic Empire, and who was the first artist you had? 2017. It was this six foot six white kid go by the name of Noah Shark. We called him White Drake. No cap, that boy was crazy. He's still hard. You know what I'm saying? We just, I was just with him the other day, but I did a deal with Jeezy for him. And same, you know, same thing, you know. I don't want to even speak on that because I'll be the star at something else. <laughs> Understood, man. Um, how'd you discover Euro got it? Euro actually, the record from Noah that I was pushing was called Wavy. Called I'm So Wavy. Euro actually produced the record. And he featured on the record. Oh, okay. So when I did the deal with Noah with Jeezy, uh, I needed another artist to kind of push. And I was like, I thought Euro was dope. I thought he was 
talented. Music had substance. He was Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? He produced and he was an artist. I was like, oh, yeah, it's a no-brainer for me. Let's go. So that's how we got Euro. Okay. Yeah. And he's about to drop that single with Future, man. Oh, yeah. His whole, man. Listen, Euro Got It is about to have the best album of the year. No cap. He got everybody on there. He got Future. He got Roddy Rich. He got Miss Mulatto. He got The Baby. He got Lil Baby. God he got Gunna. <laughs> he got Fujiano. All on one tape. That's wild right there. Oh, yeah. It's, it's about, to, yeah. And it's hard. And this music got substance. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It ain't just, man, you, when it drop, like, trust me. Remember I told y'all, when it drop, it's finna eat the streets. No cap. Don't right. make a nigga jump off the porch and be like, who the f- is that? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, for real. All right, so what about Fujiano? How'd you come across his music? So, Fujiano, like I said, I was doing services for independent artists. I, I did this thing called an Indie King, right? Which I just had the last one. Um, he, the first one I did was where I said, hey, I'm going to give an independent artist $10,000, you know, who wins, and I'm going to give him a record deal. He signed up for it, he won. The rest is history. <laughs> what was your reaction when he performed? It's crazy. We knew he was out of here. It was like, cause he came with his whole hood. Man, he, he put on a show. He put on a show, like a real show. Anybody would have signed. It was a no brainer. It was like, oh yeah, home one. Like, cause at the end of it, I don't even pick the winner. The artist picked the winner. You feel me? So Euro, uh, GZ Escobar, uh, GA, and I think it was Drama J. I think they picked food. They was like, oh yeah, he the, he the dopest one. And, but he put on a show. You couldn't deny it. And after that, shot the video out there in Greensboro to Miley. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, he gone. Yeah. Was it the baby that was on the remix too? I put the baby on the remix after we did the deal with Atlantic. We did Trapper first with uh, Lil Baby. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. How's he holding up in there? Uh, man, you know, man, a cage, man, is, I don't know nobody who really take that well. You know what I'm saying? I think everybody goes through something. It's not like a comfortable situation. You feel me? I, especially when you used to having your fans, having your family, making money, you know, moving around. Like, Fujiano's a superstar. You, you get where I'm coming from? So I don't know nobody where that's fitting for. You know what I'm saying? I know it mess with your head and mess with your mind mess with your spirit but I think he's holding he's holding it up well because obviously he done been through the system for a long time so definitely I think he's holding it holding itself well and doing well yeah. but you know he has a a, a, um, a probation hearing you know what I'm saying coming up soon so hopefully he can get some bond right? hopefully we get out of there yeah you know what I'm saying turn up for his birthday for sure man yeah free food man free food for <laughs> sure uh, talk to us about your relationship with Gucci, man. No, that, this goes way back, and then you guys partnered up with, uh, with Atlantic Fugiano. and Fugiano. Yeah. So, um, man, you know, I, Gucci is a, is a Atlanta street legend. He's a hip-hop legend. You get where I'm coming from? So, for me, I did a song with Gucci back in the day called Man Down. Gucci was trying to build it. Well, he was building the new 1017. We did the deal in Atlantic with Fugiano. So, when we did that deal with Atlantic with Fugiano, um, as I was doing the deal, Gucci hit me because he already, I guess he got inside word and he got, <laughs> he got people in the building. They're like, yeah, Fujiano in here, I guess. And he was just like, congratulations on doing a great deal, boom. You know what I'm saying? That's a good one. Woo, 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 woo. And I was just like, all right, shoot. I said, I, I hit him. I said, he was like, tell Fujiano. I said, woo, woo, woo. So I FaceTimed him and he got on the phone with Fujiano. And I was like, we seen his post where he was like, yeah, I'm looking for a new artist. To put a million behind. Woo -woo. Oh, yeah. So I FaceTime and that was Fujiano's childhood idol. You get where I'm coming from? So they started talking and I was just like, hey man, we gotta make Gucci a part of this situation. And the niggas in the building was like, you sure you wanna do that? <laughs> and I was just like, hell yeah, I wanna do that because I understand the culture and I understand the example and the role model that Gucci could be for a Fujiano, coming from the streets, already going through the system, coming out the system, becoming a multi-millionaire, family man, the whole nine. And you know, for me, 
when it comes to dealing with artists, it's about changing lives. It's not about me getting no money. You, you get where I'm coming from? It's about the money come with the win for me. You feel me? So, and I was already getting money. You understand what I'm saying? So, it's like even when I first signed food, the first thing I did was show them my bank account. I showed them my last three month statements. I said, I want you to understand, I was doing this, and at the time I was making about 500,000 a month. You get where I'm coming from? So, I showed him every month. You get where I'm coming from? Like, I'm already getting money. <laughs> Please don't feel like you made me. You get where I'm coming from? <laughs> I'm doing this as a blessing to help you. You feel where I'm coming from? So he was like, but I feel you. And I told him how I was doing it. I don't sell no drugs. I ain't scamming nobody. We just got real creative with the money. You know what I'm saying? And it's about using your brain and, and research. Like, cause me and my partner Energy, we were information junkies. We was just reading books, learning, taking like courses and going to seminars and just getting a bunch of information to learn, but then putting it into action. We don't, we don't just read and be like, okay, that was, now we actually apply it, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, we was, we learned, we wanted to get money from banks. We didn't want to get money from people. And we learned how to play the bank game, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, a lot of people here, you know, they street, we didn't want to give out that information because we felt like niggas would mess up the hustle, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, real talk, you know, niggas is on it, but they don't do it the right way. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm going to give y'all a key, a key thing for y'all to look up. We play the account receivable game. Learn what an account receivable is. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure you know what it is because you're a business, man. You got a business. Mm -hmm. But what we was doing, you know, as a, in our culture, we are taught that it's bad. You understand what I'm saying? We taught that in our culture. So everybody don't want no debt. They're scared of debt. They're scared of banks. That's why everything is cash. Cash transactions. You see niggas with the, the, yeah, I got cash. You feel me? But to me, I don't like cash. I'm not a cash guy. I'm a, I'm a card guy. <laughs> like I got over a hundred business cards. No cap. You feel me? So I play a different type of game. You know what I'm saying? Like I got access to damn near a million dollars in business credit cards. All with my name on it. You understand what I'm saying? So it ain't no scam. It's all with my name, my real government name on it. You feel me? So I want you to understand that. So when I tell you I got like right now, I got like uh, 31 account receivables. You feel me? So now imagine you borrowed against all 31. And I imagine you getting multiple loans on all 31 and you just managing the debt. See, I'm giving some free game right now. I'm giving some jewels. But they got to do their research or they got to tap in with me if they want to understand more of what I'm saying. But anybody that's serious about changing their financial situation, Definitely need to understand the four types of credit and then they need to understand it's only three ways to increase income Credit debt, and productivity You feel me? See, I'm giving y'all some different. I don't know if you got this yet on, on off the porch Not you know yet. But Exactly because you're talking to a real boss <laughs> <laughs> You get all covered from so when you're talking to a real boss, you're gonna get some real boss jewels You feel me? And, and the thing about it is is this right here. I employ almost a hundred people Payroll be damn near 100000 a week. <laughs> For real. No cap. So I could look. No blinking, no flinching, no none of that. Straight facts. I told you. This right here, you get the real when you, when you deal with boom. You see what I'm saying? Like a lot of these niggas, they come on here and they might cap, flex, finesse. With it. No, you're going to get the real. You can fact check me. All right, so at what point did you know you needed to start hiring some help for AE, man? What? Man, I've been hiring since... I've been hiring since I opened up my first business. You get where I'm coming from? So I understand, like I said, it's only three ways to increase income, credit, debt, and productivity. I'm one person. I can only, it's only 24 hours in a day. I can only do so much by myself. So people who don't like to hire, they're really selfish. But they handicap themselves because they don't understand. If I pay you, I got, now I got, it's called, it's like horsepower. You feel me? One horse can get me so much energy. Five horses gonna get me a lot of energy. You get where I'm coming from? And I'm gonna be able to accomplish more and go further. Because now we all don't have to work as hard. I can work less and get more done. You feel me? So it's just a way of thinking, man. A lot of people need a paradigm shift. I need y'all to understand, look up paradigm. Yeah. Um, where are you trying to take the brand at this point? Man, for me, most people are trying to compare us to a QC or a TIG, like no disrespect to none of them. I love what they're doing. You get where I'm coming from? 
But me, I'm not on trying to create a movement or a wave. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that's what they're doing. But I don't want to be known as the hottest thing in Atlanta. I'm trying to create an Interscope, an Atlantic, an Alamo, a 300. I'm trying to do some different stuff where it's like it's not based on one artist or a movement or a brand. Or I'm trying to create what I am. I ain't even trying. I'm creating a legitimate business that do so much things, so many different services to service independent artists and help them achieve their dreams and, and goals and music and, and hopefully become major or be super successful on income stream. You feel me? That's the goal for me is to help people and help artists and help creative people, producers, singer, songwriters, athletes, influencers, the whole nine. How many artists do you have on the management side at this point? That's classified. <laughs> it's in the hundreds though, right? It's classified. <laughs> um, That's what classified information. I can't give you that. Okay. It's, a, it's, it's enough though. It's enough, I'm sure. Yeah, but we got the team. Yeah. We got the team. So when you're about to sign an artist, what are some of the qualities you look for? Uh, for me, when it comes to signing an artist, uh, it's more so like, it depends on, for me, it start business first. I'm going to be honest with you. I ain't going to cap you down. It's business first. Is that artist marketable? Or does he have a dope record? Either, either he's marketable or have a dope record. That's what, that's what I start with. You know what I'm saying? And from there, I figure it out because it's multiple ways to get money in music. If you're talented and you have a personality, you'll be a star. And it's not based off the music. If you make good records and you're not, uh, personality not there, you might make good records and I can push your records and we can stream. So it's, if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. And after that, it's like, okay, cool. Now I want to know the person. Okay, they're a dope individual. It's somebody I want to help. Yeah. Because I know I done passed on people who are dope, talented, got good music, but I don't like them as a person. And I'm like, this is not who I want to associate myself with. I don't make thirst plays no more, man. You don't need to. <laughs> nah, I don't work for money. Yeah. You feel me? Who's next up? Is it Euro or who's next up on the I, de finishing? Definitely right now is Euro. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Euro got, he's dropping May 14th. Okay. Uh, it's Euro, it's, uh, Euro got it for him forever. Um, it's the mixtape. Like I said, it got everybody on it. Um, you got the single, uh, the lead out single, Future and Future. He's, he's independent, not signed to no major <laughs> with songs for Future, Roddy Rich and the Baby and Lil Baby and Gunner. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, he reminded me of myself when I was an independent artist. I had songs with Future and Gucci and Two Chains and Yo Gotti. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, uh, Euro, he might be the only artist that I look at like, okay, this is personal. You feel me? Outside of that, you know what I'm saying? Like, everybody else, I love my roster of artists. I think they're super talented, and I think everybody's going to go. It's just a matter of time. I got you, man. Yeah. What's next, boom? Man, we got this headquarter building. I'm building the label. I'm building the, um, building the brand. Uh, we got, so we just got a 20,000 square foot sky. You know what Hot 107.9 is in Atlanta? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got, they're on the 12th floor. We got the whole 11th floor. So we got two <laughs> studios up there. We got uh, um, two studios. We got, uh, it's a offices. It's a podcast up there. It's a bar up there. It's going to be a stage, lounge, TVs, free drink. Like it's something that's never been done before. Innovative, doing something. You know, moving the needle, man. Helping artists. Yeah. Pushing artists. The goal is to get platinum records and gold records and, you know, turning up, man. It's a lot of things we're trying to do. Indie King 5 coming up. If you're catching this before 4th of July. Okay. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be going to be massive. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're giving away a slave deal on Independence Day. <laughs> Real talk. What's whipping a slave the chain. Deal? A whipping the chain. <laughs> we're finna change. Yeah, we're giving away a chain. We're giving away a car. What type of car are you giving away? It's probably gonna be like one of them scat packs. You know, they, okay. you know they like them. That's Everyone cool. in Atlanta's got them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get one of them scat packs. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and uh, we're gonna give away some cash as well. Okay. Yeah. So, but obviously we're not gonna sign nobody contractually. It's just gonna be a blessing. We we declaring our independence. I got you. Man. For sure. 
Any last words, any shout outs before we wrap it up? Man, shout out my whole Authentic Empire family. Free my boy Fujiano. Uh, it's Authentic and now. Boom, man. Still booming. Go log on to the website. If you're trying to get with me, it's www.authenticempiremg.com. Boom, man, underscore AE on all social media platforms. And I'm out. Ain't got no job, but I'm working. Word. And traffic, I'm swerving and serving. Skirt. That Glock on me, perk got me nervous. I'ma catch him and shoot him on purpose. Don't be scared when you see